This is going to be a fantastic sister to sister. There's a question, really interesting. Um, someone wrote that the sister wants to marry a guy that everyone feels is wrong. Mm. And what about my husband and I want a divorce, but the church says not to. And also, my husband and I have different love language. <laughs> love Duh. language. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Sister to Sister. We're so glad you tuned in. We're a show with five very opinionated women and we bring answers to the questions of the world from a biblical standpoint. You'll see in a minute. But I'm gonna go to Flo because she's always free of the wisdom of Flo. This is hard, this is hard. This woman writes, you write, I want a divorce, but my church says I can't. What do you think? What do we think? Well, you know, in all seriousness, marriage is meant, intended to be um, a lifelong covenant. It is ideally marriage is to be uh, for a lifetime. Um, it's to be permanent, it's to be purposeful. However, if you look in Matthew and if you look in Corinthians, because mm -hmm. God knows mm -hmm. how frail humanity is. And so there are, uh, whether you want to refer to it as a, a, exceptions, um, but something like abuse, for example, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, God permits it. Um, sexual immorality, God permits it. Um, an unbeliever unbel wishing to mm -hmm. depart, mm -hmm. God permits it. And so I think sometimes in the church what we have to watch is that we will take certain things um, and we're so busy, it, it, it's like, it's a good thing that we are so engrossed in wanting to please God, but sometimes we take the scriptures out of context and it actually places people in bondage. And I know of situations where people have gone through abusive relationships and they were counseled to stay. And I know yeah. of someone yeah. who actually mm -hmm. passed away because oh they gosh. were killed by Ooh. their spouse. Oh my gosh. And the church was encouraging them right. to so stay. I just wonder, it, or let's mm -hmm. say it's not abuse. Yeah. What does everybody else think about this? Somebody. Moses also said the hardness of heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. When somebody's mm -hmm. heart is so hard and mm -hmm. so cold, mm -hmm. um, f you know, first of all, we don't do what just the church says. Mm -hmm. We do what the word mm -hmm. says. Yeah. That's right. And that's where our ultimate authority yeah. is. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what the church advises you, I would dig deep into the scriptures, the word of God yeah, and get right. wise counsel. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, one, one thing that I think we should be careful of is that it, if I'm just unhappy in mm -hmm. marriage, yes. you know, is that cause for a divorce because there's a lot of times we feel very unhappy you know it's just hard season hard times you're not gelling together you're just not on the same page and it's like throwing in the towel at that point is not wise I would say you know there, it is a covenant that we made before God but I love what Kenneth Hagin told us in Bible school he said I've never seen the agape God kind of love go to the divorce court so I think if each of us individually, to the best of our ability, would try to walk out and walk in that agape, God kind of love, it's, it's something that supersedes your own natural flesh right, right. to forgive, to move forward, to, walk, to, to get over offenses, and to be loving toward one well, another. You have, you have handled divorces yes, for years I, and years and years. Yes, so what I would you have. tell this You know, this it's woman. sad that we go the way of the culture. Yep, that's I good. mean, the that's 1980s good. in Pennsylvania and throughout the United States brought in the no fault mm -hmm. divorce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody's fault, you're separated for a period of time. It could be two years, various states. You're 
permitted by the court to get a divorce for no grounds yes. at all. Wow. So the pendulum has swung. Now some people that have been abused or in relationships that are very difficult, oh my goodness, amen, flee, run. Whether you divorce or not, get away from the right. toxic situation. That's right. That's, That's right. What you said. Um, right. Uh, right. Yes, uh, what Flo said, uh, Matthew, I think it's 19, Jesus says what God put together, don't let man separate. Right. So don't let the things of this world, don't let your own character, your own feelings, somebody else, another relationship, another woman, another man, separate you from what God joined together. Jesus commanded that. So be careful as to the reason. And like she said, it's not just the church, it's the principles, it's the mind of God, mm -hmm. it's the mind of Christ mm -hmm. that leads us mm -hmm. through. How do we grow without that friction in marriage? Right. Well, right. Speaking of that though, this is the next question is exactly that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yes. I want, so hold, go, your, hold on to your thought and you go with this one. Mm -hmm. This is so good. <laughs> Someone wrote, my husband and I have completely different love languages. I'm not even sure what they are. We just can't find the middle. So you're, what you're talking mm -hmm. is exactly this. Amy, what in the world? I mean, yeah, different love languages. You think, I mean, what are they? We're, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Yeah. I, like, I say tomato, <laughs> you say tomato, you know, let's call the whole thing off. The, it's, no. qu it's quality time, <laughs> the five la love languages, quality of time, acts of service, uh, giving gifts, words of affirmation, and physical touch. Yeah, so. Here's the problem. We give to people what we ourselves want to receive. Mm. I love receiving gifts. If mm -hmm. you're in my world, I give gifts. I mm -hmm. hardly mm -hmm. ever miss giving gifts. <laughs> I love giving gifts. I love and want to receive words of affirmation. So what am I going mm -hmm. to give, be dishing out? Words of affirmation, you know, and to somebody that doesn't need yes. that, it's like, okay. <laughs> it's yeah, like, right. now when are we gonna sit down and just talk for hours and hours and you're just like, I'm very busy. I have a lot yeah. of, you know, and it's like, yes. but that's how they feel loved or physical touch, you know? So I think it's so important to find out like what, what makes them tick? Like what do they need from me? How could, or how could I bless them Amen. today? Well, That's you've always good. said you're your husband's biggest yeah. cheerleader. What yeah. stood out to me right. though is she's saying, we just can't seem to meet in the middle. And that, you know, that caught my attention. Because yes. the love languages, yeah, personalities, mm -hmm. um, all of those are things, and you said it about how we come together, iron sharpening iron, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there is a part of your spirit that gets so cultivated and forged in the fire of the mm -hmm. covenant of marriage um, that you just, I, I don't think that you get from any other relationship. Okay, so then, you know, my question is, do they pray together? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Like, what, where, 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 is, where, yeah, where is this part coming from? We just can't meet in the middle. That sounds like flesh yeah. on parade. Yeah. You know, because yeah. um, we got to prefer one another. And I haven't heard from you, Missy. <laughs> I'm being quiet today. I know. Oh, you, have I know. To <laughs> you know you have to jump in <laughs> the meat on the, this. The meat in the middle part stuck out to me, too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. for me, I don't think love is meeting in the middle. Love is... Sounds full blown good. passion. Love is full blown. You go to the other side. Love is sacrificial. Mm -hmm. You give up the kind of love you want to receive and you meet them with the love they want to receive. That's what Amy just yes. said. So yeah. you, you might not, you might love getting gifts and you might love hearing words, but if mm -hmm. they want acts of service, right. then you give up the kind of love right. you want to receive and you give them what they want to receive yeah. so that they can right. feel the kind of love they want to feel. Right. That is true, true love. love. Meeting them where they yeah, want like to feel it. loved. It's not about keeping score. It's Amen. not about saying, well, they made me feel loved today, so I'm gonna make them feel Amen. loved today. When you love somebody, you show them the love they want to feel, and you lavish that upon them. Yes. Right. And you don't Amen. care about how many times they made you feel loved, That's because right. that is what love is, and, and that is what love yeah. 
does. You don't buy love. No. Right. You don't no, use that exactly. to buy no, love. it's no, not man. transactional. None. It is just yeah. lavish because that is what our God does to us. He That's lavishes right. his love it's upon so us. But it has That's to so be good. replenished. That's the only, it, I agree with you. It it, and I think sometimes, I just does. don't want us to give the message out like you need to do this and you no. no, you do have feelings. And Jesus himself, yes. when he would give out and virtue would flow out of him, oh, he would pull right. away yes. and he'd get yes. time with his right. father yes. and get restored. And so I think we have to be very careful that we're not sending the message. Yes. You are not doing this right, you know, yeah. because uh, the thing of it is, I is I, I, I am giving, I am preferring, yes. but then there's nothing coming back Absolutely. to me. So you're constantly extracting out of me yeah. and I get depleted. And that's where that. communication comes into right. play. Right. Where you have right. to communicate right. with one right. another and You're say, right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being filled up. And this mm -hmm. is, this is the kind of love I need. Maybe your spouse doesn't know that about yes, you and good. you need to communicate and that. And just to remind, just the five love languages, yes, they're go. not the great doctrines of the church no. right. yes. as well. That's so, I mean, good. they're not like the Holy Scripture. Mm -hmm. So, yes. I mean, if you need to just put those aside and get in the Word yeah. and get a clear I like that. picture. Oh, yeah. I got way and more I have a scripture. <laughs> Philippians 4 <laughs> says, do nothing out of selfish, selfish ambition, ambition right. but humble yourself. We can and, toast to that. And prefer Let's someone toast. else. Woo! Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Hello, right. toaster. Do you want to oh, move sorry. on? Yeah. I'm just trying to move on. I am talking and toasting. It's all right. I'm not, I can't do my job, but I would rather toast. However, th this is really important, and I'm going to go to Flo because someone wrote this, and please mm -hmm. hear us here. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to find my purpose. Well, hello. No matter what I try, it falls. Mm -hmm. hmm. Flo, what do you got? I think they need to start with what the word says about them. Yes. Um, I think when we are, are struggling for purpose, sometimes we're struggling for identity. We might be looking for the wrong reasons. Will this give me influence? Will this bring me a right. lucrative in yeah, income? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I think when we find ourselves in the word, I mean, we are God's crown creation and we are not lacking yes. anything. Yeah. But as the process, as we grow, as we mature, um, what begins to happen, you start to see what things make your spirit just soar? Um, what are the things True. that you are naturally good at? What are the things that you feel, when I do this, I don't even feel like I'm working. I don't even care if I get paid. I don't care, you know, um, what comes back, back to me. Uh, so I, I think that a lot, of, a lot of people, when they think about purpose, they're thinking on it too hard. Yeah, because I think mm -hmm. she's writing no matter what I try. Mm -hmm. And you just said something that mm -hmm. hit my spirit. Mm -hmm. When you get in the word, it's not what you try. It's what God says about you. Mm -hmm. What do you have scripture for me? Yeah, and, and Romans Good. says, okay. uh, Ecclesiastic says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it well. That's right. So That's whatever right. is in front of you now, if it's your children, if it's your work, if it's reading, if it's studying, do that one thing well. Faithful in the little, God trusts you faithful in much. And your purpose is to glorify Him. Mm -hmm. As Flo said, not mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. We were created to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And I think it's John, and John, it says, the Pharisees, the religious people, missed the purposes of God because they refused to be baptized by John. Mm -hmm. Now, baptizing wow. in water doesn't make you have a purpose, That's good. but mm -hmm. you follow God's will. They knew God was pulling them. Yes, I'm a sinner. Go baptize. Go under the water. Know who you are, and I will fulfill your purpose. I'm not saying do a physical baptism. Well, you but can. But yes, but be baptized in him Amen. and come up Amen. to purpose. The Pharisees, the religious people missed it. And I was almost in tears when I read that scripture for the first time. What do you have, Amy, as a pastor with this purpose? I mean, it's not the yeah. book, The Purpose Driven Life. Yeah. What, do, what do you yeah. got? Uh, Colossians 1.16 says that everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Mm -hmm. There is a divine design in 
you. You were wired a certain way. You were created a certain way with certain gifts and skills and abilities and talents and treasures. And it is really, I mean, we get to spend a lifetime just digging deep through different seasons. So maybe this person, you know, isn't having such just a purpose uh, challenge. Maybe they're just, maybe they're wanting to feel significant. Is what I'm doing mm. significant? Oh, and, and so ask God, God, how can I serve your people well with the gifts and the talents that you've that given, given to me. me? It's so interesting because you're talking about the glory, we just find the glory and you're talking about, you know, serving, mm -hmm. but what Flo said is what resonated most in my heart and I hope you heard her. It's not what you try, it's not your job, it's not what you do at church, it's in the word of God yeah. and he will reveal to you great wisdom through the words of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, we're gonna be right back because this is a really good show today. Stay right there. Hi and welcome back. We're still gibbity gabbing about yes, the love languages are. and the purpose driven life and we're going to go on to the questions that you write to us because you have no idea how important it is to hear from you. You have no idea that what we do is all for you in the name of Jesus. So write to us. Let us know. All right. Oh my gosh. Someone wrote this. My sister is engaged to a man. And my whole family believes he's all wrong for her. The more we talk to her, the more she pulls away from us. She doesn't want to hear us. I can get it. We know it's her decision, but we're afraid she's going to regret it later. So, oh my. Roxy. Ooh. This question is so good. It is. But when I saw engagement, where were you, family, mm. oh. at the first date? Yeah. Where were you at the first family gathering? Did you invite him to things where you get to know him and she would get to see him in your surroundings. Like, where were you? But you have to remember this. A Proverbs 17 says, friends love at all times. Mm -hmm. And a brother is born for adversity. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our friends, our relatives have to go through some trials to learn obedience, to learn God's love. True. And you know, the Bible also says what the truth will set you free. That's the truth about salvation. But the truth will also may at some point set them free. So I would say, keep driving through. You think you're driving that's that person right. away, right. but that's if they right. love you, if there's a mutual respect in the family, they are listening that's somewhere. Right. And you know what? One more thing I'd like to say. Psalm 73 says, when I entered your sanctuary, I got wisdom. Okay. That's good. That's Take good. her to church. Yeah. Take her to an event where she could be exposed to God's love, right. not just your opinions. Right. right. But God gets through when we can't. Right. Right. I, I love what Roxy just shared. I, you know, one of my thoughts, though, when I read it, Roxy, was that, you know, it's her enemy. It's her war, it's her battle. Yeah. So as Aaron and hers, as fellow soldiers, we come alongside. And the way that we war with them is we show up with humility, love, mm -hmm. and support. Um, and refuse to not be present in their life because they're making a decision that you're not happy with. Yes. Because good. the bottom line is, if we are friends, if we are sisters in the Lord, I'm gonna share the truth with you. But it has to be done in love with the spirit, all of us bearing us the ministry of reconciliation so that I'm gonna be there for you. I may not agree, I'm gonna tell you, but if things should go awry or when they go awry, you still have that same mm. sister and friend there yeah. to help walk you through the You're process. You're shaking your head, Amy. Mm -hmm. I, Shaking your head. I know. Well, I'm thinking about the family and I'm thinking about the couple that's getting married. I, I would say to the daughter that's not listening, because there are daughters, they just don't listen. I mean, they're going to do their own thing. They're strong-willed. They're, mm -hmm. you know, defiant, whatever. Um, so to that one, I would say you would be wise to listen to those who really love you. Right. Mm -hmm. To the family whose child is making this decision, what do you do? 
I mean, you pray, you support, mm -hmm. you have boundaries, you know, mm -hmm. you bless them, you, you try to get to know them, and you just be there for them. Right. Well, you know, this is really good because Corey's going to take us home on this question. Oh, my word. I have no patience with people, the lady writes, or guy. I know that I don't represent God when I lose my control. Okay, so, yeah, I don't want to be able to control it. I just, I just wanted to say what I want to say. I'm sorry, why is this question directed because, to you? Because, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. You can speak the truth in love. No, I mean, truly, patience is not a virtue that I have. So, <laughs> this okay. is apropos. It is a fruit that you have, though. It's <laughs> okay. okay. Um, <laughs> Corey's like, no pretense. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, no, yeah. Tru mm -hmm. Truly something I do struggle with. Um, I would say that, um, you know, that it is something that we can work on. <laughs> um, it, it is something we can work on. And I would say start with the small things. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Start with little tasks. Work on, you know, the patients in the kitchen. You know, maybe That's not right. on people, mm -hmm. but on things. Work on, you know, just, you know, reward yourself for the little wins with the patients. And, you know, <laughs> You can pray for patience, but be prepared because yes, God going to help you get patience, but you better be prepared for what's coming your way if you pray for patience. Okay, so that's good. Yeah. Do you have a scripture? I do, but I'd like to say this first. Know your triggers. That's right. True. That's right. That's you know, right. when I don't eat right, oh man, Snickers. I get, you know, and it's terrible to say this. Mm -hmm. Even when I fast, I get a little testy. Mm. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, know your triggers, keep yourself healthy, try to have not stress. These physical things sometimes help you with your mental things. And the other thing I have to say is about Colossians. The, wor the Christ's word has to dwell in you deeply. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then what does it say? With thankfulness. Grateful people aren't mad and hateful. They're grateful. I'm grateful that I got up. Bless the Lord, this is the day the right. Lord has yeah. made. That's right. I'm grateful that my husband is whatever, my child, my work. Find something to be grateful yeah. for. Now that being said, I ran over a curb yesterday. <laughs> And I started to swear. I was going to swear badly. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I remember this question. The person, <laughs> the person was walking slowly across the highway. I'm like, what are you doing? I hit the curb and God's like, boom, you know, bounced me out of it. Like, all right, we love. This is a beautiful day. She has to walk. You get to ride. Mm -hmm. Be thankful. Yeah, you have a car. Be I thankful mean, you have a car. I mean, the curb is better than the alternative of yeah, hitting the person. Yeah. Right, right, right. But you know what? The, the, what's so cool about what you're just saying is, at least you were in your car by yourself, yes. so you didn't take out any anger on any other person. Oh, and no. the reason I went right. to you on that, Corey, on this last question is, if a person upsets you, to have patience with the person. You came to me because I'm terrible at patience. No. <laughs> well, that's true. And I think we have to remember something is when we're in a situation where we want to swear, or we have to remember whose we are. Yes. And that we represent. Oh, I mean, I, I yes. represent my church when I'm out and about in, in my community, right. but mostly I represent him. Yeah, that's right. So that's if right. you want yeah. if you want to yell, scream, and I mean, I did have someone say to me one time, that's not being a very Christian woman, I was so taken aback and I was so humbled yeah, yeah. and I was so sorry yeah. for the way yeah, that right. I expressed my offense. Yeah, right. So be careful, love, be kind because he loves and is kind. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. That's Guys, these were some great questions today. I wish you were in the room and we could talk about it and we could uh, work through something. I mean, it's a lot to talk about. There's many angles and the scripture has a lot to say about all of these, finding your purpose, getting a divorce, your love languages, and what do you do when you really have no patience with people? I was kind of giggling because 
we all probably have felt that multiple times, maybe a day. So don't worry if you're feeling like, I am so irritated with people, just get back in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. <laughs> Let's go to a scripture as we close out today. We'd love to finish with the word of God. Philippians 2, 3 says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but rather in humility, value others above yourselves. Listen, that, that's pretty much the answer to life's problems right there because selfish ambition can ruin a church, ruin a marriage, ruin a relationship, could ruin your life, but also genuine humility can build your life build your relationships, build your marriage, build the church. And I mean, the world would be a better place if we would just walk in humility. But I also love the scripture right after this. It says, not looking to your own interest, but to the interest of others. And then he finishes out and says, in your relationships, be like Christ, have the same mindset as Christ. So today, I mean, let's pause, let's take a break. Let's really think about what we're thinking about. Let's assess things and say, do I have the mind of God on this matter? Or am I just acting out in the flesh? Let's get back in the spirit and get back in the love of God. Oh my gosh, that was so good, Amy. I hate even to talk, but I will talk because here's what we do. <laughs> At the end of Sister to Sister, you heard Amy with scripture. Scripture just is the, the driving factor in all of our lives. And this one, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a sister sharpen the other. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope you enjoyed it.